Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas, and uh, I was just uh, recently enjoying a live stream on YouTube from uh, Island Metal Forge, and uh, Yamez over there, a lot of entertainment, and uh, we were talking about suggested things to make, and I suggested a thing just off the top of my head, where most of my ideas come from, uh, to make a shoehorn bottle opener that has two purposes it can be made from one piece of steel so I figured why not and uh, I haven't made a whole lot of things from rail spikes as of late because I don't want to be just that spike guy but it fits the bill now the end on here is going to be the shoehorn and that's kind of sharp already so the first thing I'm going to do is heat this up and try to upset that material back into the stock and then I'm going to have to separate the ends a bit by drawing the center out but uh, first thing I'm going to do is upset this end then lay this head out to make the opener portion so let's get this in the fire get it hot and let's tame this spike into what we want see you in a minute all right let's upset this back a little bit <laughs> Probably wondering why I'm not using my spike head tongs. <coughs> they were broken. <clears throat> that is curled over a little bit. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let me get the head end in while it's still comfortable to hold on to with these square jaw tongs. Get that warmed up and start laying it out. See you in a minute. <laughs> All right, just like many times before. I lay that little back lip down. Here, move. Go over the lazy edge of the anvil where it's not sharp. Straighten this out a little bit. <coughs> no cold shot. See by laying that back edge down first and slowly straightening it out, no cold shot. If you get one, you just weld it. See you in a minute. All right, let's brush this off just a hair. See the potential for a nice cold set there. The old trusty two-pounder. Really cleans it up nice. I'm trying to avoid having to do a weld on this. After a while I got to where I can do it without having to forge weld coal shots. Right, 
And I think I'm gonna start punching the hole while I got a little heat here. Uh, I'm gonna mark the hole. I'm gonna put it right there. Ah. Or I'd never make it eaten with chopsticks. Anyway, I don't wanna damage my tooling here. Get a little hotter. Oh. Get the bottle opener sorted. Then we can grab a hold of it. Get this thing long enough to do the job with. See you in a minute. Big dirty hand. Alright, there it sits. With no hole getting punched in it. Let's remedy that, shall we? Lug starting to move. Should have had my stuff cleared beforehand. And it's out. Oh, look at there, and it left my slug sitting pretty on the animal. No damage to the punch. <laughs> Let me grab it up and show you the hole. There you go. Hole. Get it in there and we'll expand this hole. See you in a minute. All right, here we go. Getting progressively larger. So we're up to about uh, nine sixteenths of an inch on it, roughly about fifteen millimeters. And I'll show you the progress. Hole getting more bigger. So we put it back in there, span the hole as big as we can get it, finish it off. I'm going to put this three quarter inch punch through it, get it out to about here, and that ought to be big enough to pass a quarter dollar through, which is how I usually gauge my bottle opener. Up until recently, in the last video, I never showed that that step, that newly developed step of using a quarter dollar, but if you can pass this coin through that hole and have plenty of slop, a good eighth inch on each side, then it's perfect size to flatten the crown, punch the tab, and make a comfortable bottle opener such as this one. This is a piece from my last video where I took a three quarter inch wrench and produced a barbecue fork and bottle opener. So if you uh, 
haven't seen that video, I suggest you go watch it if you're interested in uh, watching this thing being made. And I actually opened a bottle with it, so yes, it works. Let's let that heat up just a little bit, and we'll get back with you. See you in a minute. All right, I'm fixing to pull the piece out, but I want to note this. Uh, on my smaller anvil, I used to have a hardy hole with 7 eighths of an inch, which was great for straddling a flattened out spike head over and punching it through hole and enlarging it and drifting that hole larger. This hardy hole is almost an inch and a half. It's a little bigger than an inch and a quarter. So what that'll do is it causes a lot of concave stuff to go on. So you have to work toward the corners and keep flipping the piece over. Eventually I'd like to make some inserts for this for different processes, but if you ain't got it, you can't use it. So let's get on with this. some out of this heat. See it starting to concave a little? And while the uh, drift is still in there, turn it over. Try to engage as much surface on the corners as I can. Switch corners. Okay. Starting to lip a little. So I have to undo some of that drifting by knocking that lippage down so I don't wind up with those cold shots I've been trying to avoid. You can see it, but the lip's starting to form. Let's take care of that before it becomes an issue. Well, I got some heat. Let's do a little bit of straightening out. One great thing about this hardy hole being as big as it is, is it gives you a little short anvil edge right there you can use like this. Things seem to fit in it pretty good. Well there's what we got. Let's check it with that handle punch that I was showing you. No, we need to go a little bit larger to get this in there and then this would be a great way to drift it out because it's not as tall as the other drift, therefore I can get a fuller swing on it, and uh, you can see that nice taper that it has. This is a ready-made blacksmith tool. This was a tool that was bought for blacksmithing back in the day, and uh, my great-grandfather had one of these, and uh, my old dad told me he used to use it to punch holes in them logging grabs, just like it. Anyway, enough for your history lesson, back in. See you in a minute. All right, I got a pretty high heat on it. Let's get with it. working out nicely. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Now it'll fit comfortably around the horn. I don't want to draw it up too much because it's going to thin this area and uh, that's about as thick as I want to leave it right there. At the top of the hoop is what I mean. So I can target the areas that I want to move on the horn. See there? 
this is narrower thinner material in this area so if I were to use that punch any further it would thin that even more and what I want to do is I want to kind of knock some of this meat around the fat edges inward around the horn and expand the hoop that way and then I'll check it with my quarter dollar so let's get her hot and we'll see you in a minute at the horn all right, let's sail around the horn. We're getting there. Starting to get her flattened out a bit there as well. Back in. All right. What I mean about the quarter? Sloppy both ways. All right, warm it up a bit. Crown it down, smash the tab. See you in a minute. All right, this is a two tongue operation here. Grab it out in one. Engage it in another, and then and touch that up on the horn, it's getting sharp in that one corner. Got enough heat left to smash some of the tab in. No. Back in. I like to get that tab flush with the back. That way it will easily engage bottle caps. So, there it is. Can you see the shape of the tool that I use? Well, I guess you can see it. 
I made this for drifting eyes and rail spike tomahawks a long time ago. Just a piece of mild steel, but it works perfect for this. You can use like a ball ended fuller and other stuff like that. Now we can grab this end and we can draw this out. First thing I'm going to do, while it's uh, not glowing too brightly, I'm going to try to show you this little lip. Uh, I have a couple of options. I can take and grind it out, or I can try to weld it. You see where that tip folded over? That's going to create a nasty little cold shut for me, and I really don't need that little piece of material. I'd rather get rid of it, so I'm working with something smooth. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to go hot rasp this off. So we'll see you in a minute. All right. Instead of having to cool my piece down to use an angle grinder or my belt grinder, such as it is, I can, uh, dang, vice want to come loose again. I can use a hot rasp and hog off some material. We'll see you in a minute. We'll latch this vice down. All right, let's start drawing it out a little bit. Knock these corners down. You can do this with flat jaw tongs like I'm doing, but just don't let it come up and hit you between the eyes. That's a distinct possibility. So I began drawing that out a little bit. I'm going to heat this up, get a good bed of coals going, that way I can keep a nice heat on it. I am not trying to draw the end out. I want to leave meat down here so I can make that big spoon you see on the end of uh, shoe horns. So i got to try to get all my length out of the central section of the spike. About 
that three and a half inch portion and try to push it all to the end. Let's see you in a few minutes. All right, I need to brush this off a little bit. Get a lot of scale build up. I really don't want to pound that in. I'm going to use the ball pane. I'm going to work this end out. Dipping it over the edge to create an offset shoulder. I want a kind of a gradual taper. And you'll see why, hopefully. Nothing like that smell, you know. That hot steel smell. Probably ain't great to be breathing it. And it's like air freshener to me. Alright, let's try to straighten the equation. A lot of people say, oh, there's some high carbon steel rail spikes. There may be. But I've never seen one. I beat on a lot of spikes. You can make a knife out of it or a cutting tool. It's not going to harden uh, beyond a certain point. Because even a high carbon spike, which this is marked HC on the head. I didn't show you that, but I saw it before I started. Even a high carbon spike is only high carbon for a spike. If they were high carbon steel, they would shear. They would break uh, on the tracks and they wouldn't fulfill the purpose that they were built for. But an HC spike is a little bit harder, which I like to use them for tongs because it still won't harden when you keep quenching it. But it's more durable than a low carbon or a wrought iron spike. So I'm gonna get this end in there and I'm going to try to draw from the bottle opener down this way, kind of stretch that out. This isn't going to be a very long shoehorn, but it'll be a handy size. I've seen them, you know, maybe 10, 11 inches long. They work fine. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, more of the same. Here we go. The edges down. Just try to keep a grip on it. We're getting a little wears, some wears, little wears. Get back in. All right, here we go.
Get in there. Okay, being that this drawing out is kind of long and drawn out, so to speak, I'm going to record it in a separate segment and run it high speed until we get to the point to where we're ready to do something. I don't know how to cut the video with the editor that I have and speed up certain portions, so what I'm going to do is record a portion, run at high speed, you'll still get to see all the work, but you don't have to wait patiently as it happens. So, uh, we'll see you on the next cut. See you in a minute. We're going to warm this piece up, put the boiled linseed oil hot finish on it, and clean it up, and we'll be done. See you in a minute. Alright, let's oil it down. 
Oil, linseed oil. You want it to where it smokes, but not necessarily burst into flames. It's hot enough to smoke, it'll take it into the metal. And uh, will give you a nice rust resistant finish. I'm not sure if that's 100% appropriate for a shoehorn, if you wear white socks. But uh, that's what we're going to do. That's what I do to most of my stuff. Oh, yeah. Move this aside. Smoking nice, not too much. Get your filthy rag out. See if I can feel any heat through the filthy rag. A little bit, not too much. Get her cleaned up. I wasn't going to do a twist on this, but uh, I don't know if any of you noticed, but I put the scoop to the opposite side of the touch mark. So I said, well, I've got to twist it around anyway, so I might as well give it a decorative twist. So I went a few revolutions, and uh, here's what we got. Got your combination shoehorn bottle opener. The rounding hammer gives a nice texture. And uh, it'll open your beverages. And it'll help you get your shoes on. So it's a win-win situation. It used to be an old track nail. There's what we got. That's all I got <laughs> for this evening. Until next time. Bye.